Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Garvin coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And I was just at the Kim Blandino trial. I think most of you were as well. Welcome aboard. I waited till the till the end there. I was just checking in, and then we were we had all the drama of whether or not Kim was going to testify. It's fantastic that he has decided to testify. Maybe not for him, but for us, it's fantastic. It's going to be very entertaining. Um, I didn't get to see a lot of that trial this afternoon. I stopped in a little bit just to say hi to people mostly, but um, I didn't get to see that. I understand that there was a dance involved, and uh, and I see something about him melting down. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's specific or just hyperbolic or what, but it, it does make sense to me. Meanwhile, while that was happening, I had Old Squishy Gardener guy who you've heard me talk about before on here, and he started his own channel. It's fantastic. I'll put a link to his video in the description below and also to his channel if I, if I have it or, or not. That actually came about because he kept sending me really good stuff. In fact, he sends me videos. I'm like, no, that's that's not good. It's too serious. People won't like it. And then he's like, I don't know. It's interesting. So I do it. And then a lot of people would watch it. I'm like, OK, I trust his his judgment more than mine. I don't have videos to pick at this point. Nonetheless, he started his own channel. It's really fun. He's got a few up now and uh, it's it's really fun. I would recommend going over there and checking it out. This is I just took straight from him. It's from today. It's a full on sovereign citizen. And uh, and y you'll see what happens. But he, he it's Judge Olsaver, who I'm also very fond of. And I just did one on him. And of course, even better than that, our uh, our good buddy, uh, the defense attorney, uh, Mr. Daly, shows up. And but today he's he's live and he's got to stand up. It, it's fantastic. It, it is so good. Let's just get the party started. From the secret headquarters of the Sovereign Whoa! Citizen Patrol. Initiated Jacob video is here. production sequence. Hi, Jacob. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. Uh, just waiting for him to get his audio connected. All right, Mr. Masson's audio is connected now, so we are on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan uh, versus Robert Joseph Matson, file number 21-20513-FH. Today's the date set for sentencing in this matter. We are proceeding today uh, partially by video conference uh, and, and partially in person. Uh, Mr. Daly is here in person. Mr. Daly, would you like to place your appearance on the record? James Daly, appearing on behalf of Mr. Manson. And we also have uh, Mr. Stevenson with us. From the, uh, you know, it's a good sign. He's rifling through a pile of handwritten notes. <laughs> corrections. And, sir, you are Robert Joseph Matson, correct? Hello. Hey, uh, I'm a living flesh and blood man, attorney for uh, a public officer or statutory citizen judge. I'm a living flesh and blood man. All right, you are the living flesh and blood man who's known as Robert Matson, correct? All right. Uh, attorney for uh, Robert Joseph Matson, which would be the all caps name. Good morning. Judge, there was uh, something um, that I tried to talk to my attorney about <clears throat> that uh, before you let me out of the hospital, I was in. In the hospital or the jail, I was uh, I was experiencing a lot of pain and trouble. The jail was not treating me properly. Uh, after I got out of the jail, I went um, to the hospital and they they hurried and rushed me to the Toledo Hospital where um, I almost died. Had I not been released from jail when I did, I would be dead in that county jail. Um. All right, I Mr. Manson, 
We're here yes, for sir. your sentencing hearing today. Um, I'm not really able to address issues of medical treatment while at the jail. Well, I was just saying, um, there's, there's, not, there's Mr. Manson, a Mr. Manson, yes. Mr. Manson, don't interrupt yes. me, please. Uh, the, the medical treatment that people receive at the jail is not within my purview, and I'm not going to address that today. So, well, I'm just saying, I'm going to interrupt my Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson, do not interrupt me, please. Have you had an opportunity to read and review your pre-sentence report? I did with the uh, secretary uh, for Mr. Daly. Have you had an opportunity to discuss your pre-sentence report with Mr. Daly? I haven't had an opportunity to discuss it with him. Um, I did with the secretary. The secretary, the secretary okay. got a hold of him. Mr. Daly, you could just let me allow him to finish his answer. What, what were you, you saying, Sasha. Mr. Manson? I did with the secretary. She, uh, I talked to her over the phone and told her everything looked good. And um, I believe Mr. Daly was supposed to get back a hold of me. I don't know if he got too busy or okay. something else happened. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manson. Mr. Daly, you wanted to say something on that issue. Yes, my secretary contacted him with regards to the PSI. He said everything was right. He had no complaints about anything. I still tried to contact the bag to get an answer. All right. So what we'll do is have, if Mr. Daly, if you'd be willing to step out into the hallway, we have an iPad out there um, that we can log into the Zoom session. And but I don't think he needs that. He's ready to be sent to you. You have any other questions, Mr. Madsen? Uh, yeah, Judge, I think the court's making a big mistake here. I have not. Um, I, I appreciate I'm that, not, Mr. Madsen. And I'm not doing any of my rights or immunities. I'm not a statutory citizen. I, I am sovereign. I'm not somebody who's under the uh, Mr. Madsen, jurisdiction. I've never signed anything to Mr. Madsen, if you don't stop talking, that, your device. Okay. I've discussed all of these issues with you before. Okay. And well, I, you, I object, but I'm Mr. Madsen, Madsen, that's what you're doing. Right. I've muted Mr. Matson's device because he won't stop interrupting me. Mr. Matson, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have discussed these issues before. You've raised those issues. I've ruled against those issues. And ultimately, you pled guilty of your own choice uh, to the uh, controlled substance possession of uh, narcotic less than 25 grams. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua Lee. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I just absolutely love it. Throughout all of this, all of them, there's only the three, but uh, I've gotten to sort of know Judge Olsaver, and I, the expression on his face is fantastic. He's such a straight-laced guy, but he's losing his mind, and he should be. Any sane person would be um, as we progress here. It's so good. And, of course, Daly's just himself, it, just just the way he always is. And and the defendant with his face mask and his floppy hat, the whole it's, it's so good. And so I'm going to sentence you on that charge today. If you'd like, I will have Mr. Daly step into the hall and you can have a breakout session with him so you can speak with him about your um, pre-sentence investigation report. If you have questions or things that you want to talk with him about um, regarding that report. So I'm going to unmute your device now and I want you to tell me whether you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. You want a breakout session with Mr. Daly? Sure did. Um, well, I've tried to talk to Mr. Daly before. Uh, I mean, Mr. about Manson, this. And, answer my yeah. question. Do you yes, want sir. a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not? Your Honor, I just, I, you, you're going to do what you're going to do. I mean, I've tried to talk to the courts and reason with the courts. I mean, if you're going to sentence me today, then I just file for an appeal. I'm uh, in objection to anything that happens today. Um, I was under duress when I took the plea due to my life was at stake. Mr. Manson, please answer my question. Do you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not? Mr. Daly hasn't been much of help for me, Your Honor. So I mean, That is not an answer to my question, Mr. Manson. Please answer the question. Do you want a breakout session with him or not? Sorry, Your Honor, I, I it just ain't been doing me any any help, no justice at all. I mean, I've already said what I had to say. If this court is going to send me today, then that's what they're going to do. I don't agree with anything that's going on today. I'm sorry. Um, it's just my life was at stake when I had talked to the courts. 
Uh, All right, Mr. Matson, Mr. Matson, please stop. Yes, talking. So you refuse to answer my question about whether you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not. The law. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want Mr. Mr. Matson, Daly, stop talking. Attorney. Yes, sir. The record of place Mr. Matson on mute again because he's continually interrupting me. Mr. Matson, what I'm trying to explain to you is that you have the right to discuss your pre-sentence report with your attorney before the sentencing. I've asked you four or five, maybe six times now, whether you want to have the opportunity for that breakout session, and you won't give me a simple yes or no answer. So what I'm going to do right now is ask you to ask Mr. Daly to step into the hallway. Uh, we'll set up that iPad. I'm going to put you in a breakout session with Mr. Daly uh, in order to uh, make sure that I comply with the uh, with your rights to have that breakout session. Um, so at this point, I'm going to set that up, whether you want it or not, um, so that we have complied with that requirement. Judge, I just had a repeated conversation you earlier had. I'm prepared for sentencing. All right, Mr. Matson, you've now uh, had an opportunity to discuss the pre-sentence report with Mr. Daly. Is that correct? No, he didn't want to hear me, Honor. He just told me that he was here to get me sentenced. I tried to talk to him about things. I tried to talk to him before we even went to court about things that was going on uh, with um, my life and me about dying and um, as far as being in, in incarcerated in jail, which he didn't ever try to help me out because if he would have, he would have did an investigation and known that I was in court and I was wrongfully put in, uh, in jail. I told him I'm, <clears throat> I'm not a statutory citizen. I'm a constitutional uh, wow. citizen. I mean, he don't care to do anything to help me. All he cares about is just helping you guys out and get me sucked into the system. And it's wrong. All right. For the record, uh, I did provide Mr. Matson with an opportunity to with Thank Mr. Daly in a breakout session. Uh, Mr. Matson. Yes, sir. Uh, satisfied with Mr. Daly and the advice that he's given you? I'm not satisfied with the advice he's giving me, no, sir. That might be the issue. <laughs> Do you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or the relevancy of any of the information that's in your pre-sentence report? Um, the, the, the stuff that's in the pre-sentence re report is uh, directed to a um, statutory um, citizen. I'm not a statutory citizen. I'm a constitutional citizen. You cannot be a constitutional person and a statutory person at the same time, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. It has to be constitutional okay. rights, which the court's designed to protect rights. Give the judge. So I was asking, Judge, are you working as a banker <laughs> or judge today? <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, there's no nothing to show that there's even a... Um, oh. is, is it, I mean, is there anything to show that there's even a contract between us? I mean, is there... This isn't a contract it, issue, Mr. Madison. Well, it's a criminal law issue. There's for the crime to exist, John, there today. must be an injured party. Is there an injured party? I mean, uh, uh, in, in the constitutional rights, uh, Sheriff Vistas Cohen, 40, 481 F945, uh, nor for oh, yeah, yeah, the site. A That's crime, nice. there ought to be an injured party. If there's no injured party, there's no crime. Oh, right. I mean, Mr. Manson, you're, you're arguing the basis of your conviction. Again, you pled guilty um, to this charge. What I'm asking right. you is, but Mr. Right. Manson, yes, Mr. Manson, what I'm asking you is whether uh, you'd wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or the relevancy of any of the information that is in your pre-sentence report. So is any of that information inaccurate? Inaccurate as far as the person that um, reports they're trying to sentence an all cap name and it's not me. I'm a living flesh and blood man. You're after a fictional person. 
All right, so with respect to that argument, uh, what the court will say is that uh, I will leave the information that is in the pre-sentence report uh, in the pre-sentence report and uh, deny what seems to be some kind of a request to uh, modify the pre-sentence report uh, based on an argument that uh, doesn't state any cognizable legal theory uh, about a difference between uh, no, Mr. Not. Matson as a human being and Mr. <laughs> Matson as something else. Uh, so the pre-sentence report will stand. As well, do, as Your, Your Honor, you never even explained to me what the jurisdiction was. I tried from the beginning that Mr. Matson, the jurisdiction right. of the court is. I'm going to mute Mr. Matson again because he <laughs> continues to interrupt me with I think that's uh, a, third mute. a line of argument that I, I don't even know what to say about it. It, it just is, uh, it, it's not a legal argument at all. Uh, it is. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> some kind of fanciful belief that there's a difference between Mr. Matson human being and Mr. Matson as some other entity, which uh, is not recognized by the law, and uh, I'm not going to entertain it any further. Uh, Mr. Daly, does the pre-sentence report disclose any prior convictions in which there exist any known constitutional defects? No, Your Honor. Uh, the probation officers calculated the minimum sentencing guidelines in this case to be from zero to nine months. Do you Agree with that computation guidelines, Mr. Daly? Right, I do. Thank you. Uh, before the court passes sentence, Mr. Daly, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of Mr. Matson? I've had the same uh, conversations with Mr. Matson. The court said he's never wanted to talk about this case. He's always wanted to talk about what he perceived are constitutional issues. Uh, he pled guilty. He knew what he was doing. I, I do know that. I, I'm, I'm prepared to, to complete the sentencing now. All right. Uh, Mr. Matson. in a moment, I'm going to unmute your microphone, and I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, for allocution. That's an opportunity to say anything that you'd like to say right. on your own behalf before the court passes sentence. <laughs> Don't worry. It's going to be awesome. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf? <laughs> you said that. Does I can say anything that I wish before sentencing? You can. I'm sorry, sir. You can. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. <clears throat> your Honor. <clears throat> I mean, before I took that plea, I told I told Mr. Daly that I wanted to um, sit there. I wanted him to um, sit there, get the, the cameras for the um, courts to prove that I was at the court day, the day that um, I was put in jail and said that uh, that I wasn't in the court for um, a contempt of court. He said, and I told him that I wanted to f uh, fight my case, but I didn't be out because I had medical issues. Mr. Daly said, that's fine and all, <clears throat> um, but if you stay here and you fight this case, they'll keep you in here for a year fighting your case. You will not be um, let out of um, jail. Uh, Your Honor, I couldn't do. Yeah, that sounds like really reasonable advice. And by the way, keep an eye on Daly. He's just he's just riding it out over there at council table. Yeah, I was in major pain. I would have died in that jail. <laughs> My proof is within the doctor's records in the hospital. I have serious condition, which would have left <laughs> me dead within a week from the time that I took the plea. The following day after I got up, my <clears throat> wife was um, killed in a car accident because everything's been going downhill for me ever since. And now this with the courts. I don't feel that I've had a fair chance with the courts ever since I even started with the courts because the courts has not proven jurisdiction to me. I've not written any uh, papers out agreeing in the contract saying that the courts can have any kind of jurisdiction over me. <clears throat> I have not re relinquished any sovereign Immunities that I have, <clears throat> I just don't feel that like there's uh, been anything fair, which it's not going to be with the uh, court system. I mean, I've tried to say I'm not a statutory person, 
who is uh, within your jurisdiction, uh, if anything, I'd be considered constitutional, but I'm not even under constitutional laws, but I will use them if I feel necessary as a constitutional living flesh and blood man. There is no injured party. The only injured party would be the state's laws, which the state cannot be the prosecutor, the injured party, and the judge. I mean, nothing's right. This, the court case either had been dismissed or moved to a higher court. And I wasn't going to sit there and be put left in, in, in jail to fight my case for a year. I would have been dead. I would have been stupid not to sit there and just agree with um, a plea that I didn't even agree with in the first place just to save my life. I don't think it's fair at all. It's not right. There's nothing but wrong here. It's injustice, not justice. I mean, the requirement for equal protection, I mean, okay, yeah, treatment, I mean, there's, uh, there's form zero, uh, five, uh, point zero three 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 in terms of binding you and me together, judge. Oh, Lord. There's nothing even sitting there stating that. I mean, <clears throat> You, you, you can't you can't be a constitutional person and a statutory person at the same time. <laughs> Either you're one or the other, and it's and axiomatic. Rights is right. known in form um, number ten uh, point zero zero two, and then your context you have your um, statutory privilege uh, form would be uh, point zero five zero three. If you claim your uh, privilege. A statutory privileges, you swear to constitutional rights, which I'm not doing any of that. The definition of a public <coughs> jur jurist is therefore deception, which is in form 05.014. I've not had time to get my own paperwork together due to the hospital <laughs> when I logged into the um, system because my um, Wi Fi wasn't working properly on my computer. I couldn't drop my own paperwork. <clears throat> I've been in nothing but severe pain. I've been able to move around and do much of anything for myself. I mean, I just don't feel that anything here uh, is being done today is, is right. And it's, not, and, it's, and it's not within the constitutional or the bill of rights. Okay, right here I'm missing Judge Middleton because he'd be giving, be, be giving him the vertigo ad, admonishment by now. He'd say, you, you, you got to stop. <laughs> I can't deal with this. Right. <laughs> It's common law would uh, permit, and if I ask you if you're working under the oath of office and, or as baker, you don't answer that. You don't tell me which jurisdiction we're under. I mean, these are all important things. I mean, for me to even provide intelligent argument for myself, I have to know these things. It's guaranteed in the Constitution. I didn't even ask for this attorney. You assumed that I didn't know the laws and that I needed an attorney. The attorney has done nothing for me but sit there and try to feed me to the system. Uh, the only system that I know is God and God's laws, Judge. If I sit there and swear an oath, because I'm not, I'm not, I've never taken no oath to any governmental laws. I'm not a public officer. The only person I, the only one I've ever taken an oath to is God Almighty Himself. There's only one lawgiver, one creator, one judge. And it's God Almighty. That's who I recognize. For me to sit there and <clears throat> agree to anything um, more than that would be me sitting there violating my, the laws of my God. Oh, Lord. Uh, you, you know, we are, most of us just came from the Blandino trial. And it, I, I've had a few with this judge. And, and I just had one. Um, although that one went, went, went a lot smoother. I called it the, the least annoying sovereign citizen. This, this guy is a, a piece of work. But James Daly has client after client, every one of which I would prefer Kim, Kim Blandino as a client to them. <laughs> and here's another example. All right. In determining the appropriate sentence in this case, the court has considered the seriousness of your offense, your history, the principle of proportionality, the statutory penalty, the cost of confinement, the report and recommendation of the probation department, as well as what's been said on the record. 
here this morning. The criteria and reasons for the sentence or the nature and gravity of the offense, the discipline appropriate to its commission, deterrence against repetition by you and by others, vindication for the law and the protection of society. Uh, by the way, this gets worse. As I indicated, with yes, respect to these uh, <laughs> sovereign citizen or, or whatever the other arguments uh, you're making are, we've dealt with the jurisdiction issue in the past. I've ruled on that at least uh, on at least one occasion, uh, probably multiple occasions, and that ruling is not going to change. Um, you will have appellate rights if you want to pursue those. Uh, you're welcome to uh, do that. But uh, you have pled guilty in this case. Um, you indicated during your guilty plea that uh, uh, you were not under any uh, threats or promises or anything like that. Um, and you indicated that it was your own choice to plead guilty. So the court's going to proceed with sentencing in this matter. Uh, the recommendation from your probation officer is that you serve uh, one year of probation with credit for uh, 29 days that you've served on this case. I didn't, I meant it. And that is, I think under normal circumstances, that would be an adequate recommendation with, he's gone. All right, we will, uh, I'll give him a minute or two to see if he logs back in. Oh yeah, this just happened. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure when he dropped out of the meeting. I have no idea if it was something he did on his own or if it was a connection issue. So we'll give him a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. For the record, I think it was 918 that I noticed that Mr. Madsen was no longer in the meeting. By the way, he's already pled guilty. It's just a sentencing, and it's an incredibly lenient sentence that his attorney had worked out for him. I'm looking for Mr. Madison. He was on this. Thank you, Casey Carey. Okay. Thank you. That was remember I I called him at uh, he wasn't at that number, he said the hospital. They don't know anything about what he's doing. Maybe. Oh, Robert Manson there, please. <laughs> A little dark. Okay, who am I speaking with? <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. This is Mike Stevenson, probation. Okay, he had he had sentencing this morning. He just left the uh, set. Judge, I just spoke with a female at the number that he gave me, and she claims that he is at a heart doctor appointment at this time. That's what she claims. 
sure has. All right, uh, so it has been, I think, five or six minutes now. It's now 924. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I have a uh, another hearing to move to. Uh, I will continue to monitor my waiting room to see if he logs back in. Mr. Daly, you're free to go back to your office and we'll give you a call if uh, he does log in uh, again to finish the sentencing. Uh, if he doesn't log in and we haven't heard from him by the end of the day, what I'm going to do is issue a bench warrant. Um, does have a previous failure to appear in this case, uh, so he's not entitled to the 48-hour grace period. Yeah. So if we don't have any contact from Mr. Madsen by the end of the day to finish this sentencing, we're going to issue a bench warrant for his arrest, and uh, we will finish the sentencing from the Illinois County Jail. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Well, thank you all for coming out. I just thought that was too good. Thanks again to Old Squishy Garden guy. He, uh, Gardener, I think it is. Whatever. I'll, I'll, I have a link to the video already in the description. I'll try to put a link to the channel as well. He's already got a bunch of good stuff up there. He sent me a bunch of good stuff. Um, it, you know, he's done a bunch of these. Uh, Tipman2, 999. So glad I, I caught you live. Keep up the great job. Little for the naughty and doggy fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That that was just too good. I I was doing that. <clears throat> I wanted to get this in and, and squeeze it in tonight because it was it was just too much fun. I, I already did one today and I enjoyed that. And uh, I was I was over on the Blandino trial as as you guys know because a lot of you were there. It looks like Kim Blandino is going to testify and that's going to happen on Monday. And my guess, if he's going, if they're already to the point of asking him to testify, that would be the defense case in chief. Uh, Bateman doesn't want it, so I, there would be that um, closing arguments, and they <clears throat> they have to read it jury instructions to the jury, which is a long boring process. So the, I would guess Monday, maybe Tuesday, and uh, it, it goes to the jury. Uh, for deliberation so so that that's a lot of fun but but this this was too good i couldn't hold back since i wasn't going out tonight i thought I'll, I'll squeeze this in on friday um it was just a ton of fun thank you all for coming out have a great weekend